It's an interesting concept. Is that we use it? Don't know much about it, <laughs> really. We say that you know we structure our day according to night and day, and call it the first day, or call it a day. But how do we spend our time? How do we choose to experience it? It's going to happen to us, irregardless of whether we participate in it or not. Time exists. You can't see it. You can see what the effects of it are. You can measure it, but by you can measure it by what we have defined it and given certain observable means about it. But the reality of time just simply is it exists. So too God, because you see, whether you accept it or not, God exists. Whether you see Him or not, God exists. You are going to be affected by God. God will cause aspects of your life to be arranged or rearranged according to His will, even as time will do to you. Whether you choose to participate in time or not, you will get older. The same is true with God. Whether you believe in Him or not, God will cause you to be affected by Him. And one of those effects is that at the end of the time that you have to live, literally in this physical body or this physical form, you are going to discover that you will know God. Now, the choices of knowing God are one of Will you know him to move into a age of experiencing God in a personal and intimate way? Or are you going to be separated from that age and be eternally or consistently in a place of separate condemnation for being so corrupted and so rebellious that God can't allow you into his presence the way you are and there's nothing he can do about how you are, and that he must confine you to a place of punishment for angels. But if you wind yourself there, you'll find out that hell has been cast there, as well as the angels that rebelled against God in the lake of fire. How do we know that? Jesus said. It's that simple. Jesus was there at creation. Jesus will be there at the end of the age. And Jesus will be with us as we move into ages to ages life. Because you see, the word eternal, as some critics say, doesn't last very long. And it's true, because it's time-based. But when you use the Jewish word, when you use the Jewish concept, when you know that when God said that he would give you eternal life, he said, I will give them ages to 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 ages life. Suddenly, the critics are left speechless because that ages to ages means there's a continuation that has no beginning and has no end. Guess what? The reality is, you are going to experience one way or another, ages to ages, either in condemnation or confirmation of the fact that you obeyed God or disobeyed. The only way to find that out is in Jesus. Today in Spurgeon, the Lamb is the light thereof, Revelation. Quietly contemplate the Lamb as the light of heaven. Light in scripture is the emblem of joy. The joy of the saints in heaven is comprised in this. Jesus chose us, loved us, bought us, cleansed us, robed us, kept us, glorified us. We are entirely through and through, owned by, loved by, given by, and abide in the Lord Jesus. Each one of these thoughts shall be to them like a cluster of the grapes of Eskol. Light is also the cause of beauty. Not a beauty is left when light is gone. 
Without light, no radiance flashes from the sapphire, no peaceful ray proceedeth from the pearl. And thus all the beauty of the saints above comes from and is reflected by Jesus. As planets, they reflect the light of the sun of righteousness. They live as beams proceeding from the central orb. If he withdrew, they must die. If his glory were revealed, their glory must expire. Light is also the emblem of knowledge. In heaven, our knowledge will be perfect or mature, but the Lord Jesus himself will be the fountain of it. Dark providences never understood before will then be clearly seen, and all that puzzles us now will become plain to us in the light of the Lamb. Oh, what unfoldings there will be and what glorying of the God of love. Light also means manifestation. Light manifests or reveals. In this world, it does not yet appear what we shall be. God's people are a hidden people. But when Christ receives his people unto heaven and into it, he will touch them with the, wa with the hand of his own love and change them into the image of his manifested glory. They were poor and wretched, but what a transformation they shall become. They were stained with sin, but one touch of his finger and they are bright as the sun and clear as crystal. Oh, what a manifestation all this proceeds from the exalted Lamb of God. Whatever there be of effulgent splendor, Jesus shall be the center and soul of it all. Oh, to be present and to see him in his own light as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The reality of the expression of what we determine that we think that we know that God is, is never enough to sufficiently express what God truly has revealed about himself in the book of Revelation. Whenever I hear critics often criticize Jesus or how he is, they never go to the book of Revelation to determine what he is and how he has revealed himself as the Son of God. Because in reality, when they do, they are in condemnation of the revelation of Jesus himself by God, who has said, I have shown you who God is. And because in Romans it says that they knew God and he has shown them that they changed the image of the incorruptible God into the image of corruptible man and then they tried to make him into their own image and then try to put him in a box and separate him and segment him off into a religious concept. That's not Jesus, is it? That's not who the Son of God today sitting here is. Because God is real as much as time is real. And more so because God created all things and by him and in him and through, thing, through him all things exist. Doubt the existence of God? The day is coming when you will not and it's coming soon.